Hi everybody, this is Kefran, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS on Overwatch 2. Uh, honestly, their game's running great right now on the PC. So we're going to start with the Windows Parameter, the best one for Overwatch. And after that, we will go see the settings inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphics setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for example, here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's going to show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have a, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar. Go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is, sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's gonna make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32, just divided by two. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2%, 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game, we're going to go to the video section and the video over there. So first of all, the display mode. Super important to play full screen. I was getting some random stuttering in Borderless, so super important here, the full screen. The target display, I just use the best match because it's my main monitor, but you can select it if you want. Also, super important, make sure that you have the proper GPU over there. 
I know a lot of people is playing on a laptop and sometimes you have the integrated GPU on your CPU and you have like some kind of mobile video card with uh, NVIDIA or even Radeon. So make sure that you, that you have your proper GPU over there. For the resolution, super important to first of all, take the native resolution, but also with the proper amount of Hertz, the refresh rate of your monitor. For me, by default, it was at 60, so it's pretty bad. You really need to take the, the, the proper one. For me, it's 170 Hertz. So just make sure that you select the native resolution with the good amount of Hertz. For the feel of view, it really depends on your preference. I'm playing at 100, but you have to remember that more you have FOV, more you will lose FPS. So if you're playing with the limited resources hardware uh, on your PC, maybe start at 90, do the old guide. And if your FPS is okay, you can definitely go higher after that. Or if you're struggling, go lower if you can. For the aspect ratio, I'm playing 16 by 9. Dynamic render scale, super important to run at off. You don't want your render scale moving uh, dynamically. Uh, it will mess up the visual when you're playing the game. You don't want that. Render scale, also go with custom. I'm not too sure about the automatic, what they're saying over here. I think if you're at off here, you're fine with automatic, but I prefer to go custom and just make sure that you're playing at 100. You don't want to upscale or downscale your game. For the frame rate, I recommend to lock your FPS depending on uh, the type of monitor that you have. In my case, I have a 170 Hertz monitor and I have the free sync technology. So you don't want to go higher than 170 FPS. So that's why I'm locking them at 168. So honestly, sometimes I know a lot of people, it's, it's happening. They have like a good laptop, but not good thermals. So they just unlock their, their FPS and after like... 10 minutes of gameplay, the CPU, the GPU start to throttle, and now they're have, they have some random stuttering and they don't understand why. So just lock your FPS with the amount of Hertz that you have, and you will be fine if you're struggling with your thermals. For the VSync, I'm not recommending to use VSync. It add input lag in your game. If you have FreeSync and G-Sync technology, you don't need that. Uh, if you want to use it, you can definitely also use triple buffering. It will help a little bit, but not a huge fan for competitive game like that. For reduce buffering, it really depends if uh, you will have more FPS than the amount of Hertz that you have. Definitely put this one at on. But if you have less, like in my case, because I'm locking my FPS at 168, uh, you don't want to use the reduce buffering. Gamma correction, contrast, brightness is question of preference. And I'm not using the HDR. Don't use that. It will mess up your visibility. Graphic quality now. So first of all, the high quality of sampling, sorry, go with default. Uh, they propose AMD FSR 1 and AMD just released the 2.0 version. So I don't know why they're using it. So don't use that. It's not that great. So just go with default. For the texture quality and the uh, filtering quality, it really depends on the amount of VRAM. When you go in detail, you can activate the show VRAM usage, as you can see over there. And make sure that you have 10 to 15% empty when you're playing the game. So normally, um, 4 gig and more of VRAM, you can play definitely at I or Epic 16X or 8x if you're playing at medium go with something like i or medium and if you're playing at low just go ev low everywhere i'm gonna put this back local fog detail this one is uh <laughs> you can gain a lot of fps with it if i compare ultra to low you can gain a nice nine percent boost in your fps so go with low dynamic reflection you don't want to use that go with off you will gain a four percent in your fps but it's more that you will stabilize your fps you're getting some random drop with the dynamic uh, reflection so don't use that shadow detail this one will provide you the most of fps so if i compare ultra to off you can expect 22 percent boost in your fps so it's pretty amazing so for the model detail over there not a huge difference between low and medium. You have 1% different. After that, medium with I, medium to I, sorry, it's 2%. And I to ultra, it's another 3%. So I recommend to go with medium over there. Effect detail and lighting quality, I recommend to go with low for both. First of all, you can expect a nice 10% boost in your FPS with both at low. And also, it will help a lot for visibility to see uh, your enemies and stuff like that. So you don't want too much effect and lighting quality. 
For anti-aliasing, it's a bit of question of preference. In any FPS, I always put my anti-aliasing at off. I'm not a huge fan of anti-aliasing. The game always looks blurry, and it's pretty much the same thing for Overwatch 2. Uh, if you don't like the aliasing when you're playing the game, I can recommend the FXAA. Not a huge impact on your FPS, and it's not that bad also for the visibility. For refraction quality, I recommend to go with low. High versus slow, you can expect an high 5% boost in your FPS over there. Ambient occlusion, I recommend to removing it. High to off, you can expect another 11% boost in your FPS. And it will help a lot for visibility. Uh, very easy to see enemies with ambient occlusion at off. But I know the game will look flat. So if you don't like that, go with something like medium or even high if you can run it. Local reflection here, I recommend to go with off. And the last one, the damage effects go with default. The last section is the detail. I really recommend to put everything at on. You want to monitor your game when you're starting a game like this. You want to make sure, uh, am I lagging because of my ping, because of the temp of my GPU? Is it my frame rate is the issue? So you really need to monitor all your stuff because you're doing some testing with your graphic setting. And when you did that, you can definitely removing it if you don't like those uh, stats in your image. So that's about it for my Overwatch 2 uh, guide. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.